So it's official, the first proper de-extinction project has been a success. And it occurred right underneath our noses. So now Colossal Biosciences is officially at work in cloning multiple different extinct species. And they're now one step closer to cloning the mammoth and thylacine in addition to other creatures. But there's a lot of misinformation going around about these gorgeous resurrected dire wolves. And I'm here to clear the air while also possibly maybe giving a slight apology to Colossal Biosciences for my last video. But I still feel like there's plenty of criticism that should be going around which a lot of people are ignoring, especially when it comes to these newly resurrected wolves. So since there's a lot to unpack, let's skip the intro and get straight into it. And let's start by answering the question of what exactly is a dire wolf in the first place, and how would an actual prehistoric dire wolf differ from their newly resurrected counterparts? To start, the dire wolf is not a true wolf in the traditional sense, as it does not belong to the species of Canis lupus, but rather in its own species name, that being Canis dirus, which is actually more closely related to modern day jackals than the grey wolf or domestic dog. Despite this difference, the dire wolf has specifically evolved in order to hunt ice age megafauna, such as the woolly mammoth and the modern day bison. This difference in their preferred prey has led to the dire wolf evolving to become much larger than even the modern day grey wolf, with even just average specimens of the dire wolf getting over 150 pounds and growing up to 7 feet long, which is even a good bit larger than some of our largest specimens of grey wolves today. And that says a lot, considering the fact that a lot of our modern day grey wolves, especially up north, have specifically evolved to fill in the same niche that the dire wolf once did back in the ice age. Still, the dire wolves we have successfully resurrected do not 100% represent the dire wolves of 10,000 years ago, and this is because of how we cloned them. Despite being titled as the world's first successfully resurrected species, they aren't exactly 100% replicas of their ancestors, and that goes for all of Colossal biosciences clones in the future, as that simply is impossible. Instead, these clones are actually a very complicated chimera of different creatures that are put together and modified in their genome in order to represent what would have been the dire wolf. And the same will also apply to colossal biosciences other future resurrected creatures, such as the woolly mammoth and Tasmanian tiger. So to give a nice oversimplification of the nitty gritty science of how these clones were created and what makes them so similar, yet also different from the dire wolves of the past, we gotta talk about how the DNA was first extracted, that being from a dire wolf tooth about 10,000 years ago, and also a dire wolf skull from what I believe is about 50,000 years ago. While the DNA extracted wasn't directly inserted into the mother of the surrogate parent, that being a domesticated dog in this case, the DNA was instead analyzed and compared to the modern day grey wolf, where the differing traits of both species could be best seen. So instead of mishmashing DNA like a typical hybrid, the scientist instead would try to modify the grey wolf's genome in order to match that of the dire wolf, specifically modifying 14 different genes in order to match that of the dire wolf's genetic code. So while these aren't exactly true dire wolves, you have to keep in mind just a few small genetic changes in an entire genome could lead to huge changes. After all, we share up to 99% of our genetic code with chimpanzees, and the difference the difference between a human and a chimpanzee is huge, so comparing a dire wolf to a grey wolf isn't as big of a jump, which is part of the reason why they were cloned first, over going straight into cloning the woolly mammoth, or especially the thylacine which doesn't have any close modern day relatives. So even despite the limited changes that was made to the grey wolf's genome, there's been some huge differences between the grey wolves and colossal biosciences newly created dire wolves. While these dire wolves don't exist exactly represent what would have been the wolves of the past, they do definitely seem to have a lot of those traits, some of which we didn't even know existed until these wolves were successfully cloned. Some of the differences include their much larger than average body size, denser bone structure, and a growth rate nearly twice that of the average grey wolf. They also seem to have broader than normal skulls compared to the grey wolf, and the two older clones, Romulus and Remus, also seem to have manes, which seems to be a trait entirely unique to the dire wolf, which we didn't know existed until these clones were created. The same also applies to their coarse white fur, which we didn't know existed on their prehistoric counterparts until these creatures were cloned. Though odds are that their coloration likely varied, depending 
depending on where they were found. As just like the modern day gray wolf, the dire wolf had a huge range, ranging all the way from Canada all the way down to Venezuela. So odds are there was likely huge variance within this species. But the locality which we have brought back, the northern locality of dire wolf, is absolutely gorgeous. So before I go on to criticizing colossal biosciences for a few things while also trying to clarify some other things about my last video, I have to say it. These wolves are absolutely adorable. Like how could you not love watching Romulus and Remus play? At only 6 months old they're already 80 pounds and already on track to growing up to 150 pounds or even more. So far it's hard to say if their sister, Khaleesi, will also end up growing to be the same size. As she being the last of the three clones is only three months old and still has a lot more growing to do. Interestingly enough, their howls are also completely different than that of the gray wolf. Here's a comparison you can listen to right here. So yeah, if the howl didn't make it clear, these are not gray wolves, but their own completely different unique thing. But these incredibly unique creatures aren't exactly true dire wolves either, as there's way more than just 14 genes that make a gray wolf different from a dire wolf. But it is a pretty interesting start to what might be an incredibly fascinating future. I know in my last video talking about the possibility of cloning extinct species, I was incredibly critical of colossal biosciences. That is not because I'm entirely against cloning certain species in order to bring them back from extinction, but because of the fact that I feel like a lot of people have a lot of common misconceptions about the idea of cloning, and because I feel like that money should be better spent on future conservation efforts, which I didn't realize until recently Colossal Biosciences does do to some extent. Recently they've had an entirely separate team working on modifying the genomes of certain Australian mammals in order to make it more resilient to the poison found in cane toads. If you didn't know, the cane toads of Australia have already been responsible for the extinctions of multiple different species, both locally and in their entirety. So by modifying the genomes of already existing currently alive species, we are not just making an incredibly small difference in their genetic code, but we are actually helping multiple different species from going extinct in the future because of these invasive cane toads. In turn though, why do projects like these get so little funding and attention compared to the secret creation of these dire wolves which ended up having over 10 billion dollars worth of funding put into it, only for these creatures to not even be able to go back into the wild. After all, for as cool as it is that we did bring the dire wolf back in some sort of capacity, we gotta address the elephants in the room. One of the main ones as stated before is the fact that it's probably not a good idea to release these creatures back into the wild, as it's been over 10,000 years and they did go extinct for a reason. That reason being the fact that all of their prey species have been wiped out, such as the woolly mammoth which no longer exists in North America. Sure that might change in the near future which would possibly make the idea of reintroducing these dire wolves back into the wild justifiable, but you also have to remember the fact that gray wolves have already evolved to sort of take up the niche that the dire wolf left in its absence, as now multiple different subspecies of the gray wolf, while still smaller than the dire wolf, have evolved to have much larger packs and an overall larger than average body size in order to compensate, specifically so they could hunt subarctic and arctic megafauna, just as the dire wolf did 10,000 years ago. And since these gray wolves are also endangered, the idea of introducing a new species that will likely compete and possibly even outcompete these wolves is probably not a good idea. Even though Colossal Biosciences currently plans on keeping these three individuals in captivity, mainly in order to be studied, that still hasn't stopped some Native American reservations from being interested in the idea of possibly reintroducing these dire wolves back into the wild. And for as cool as that would be, as stated before, it's probably not a good idea. Believe it or not, I'm not entirely against quote unquote playing God, but what I am against is making impulsive decisions just for the sake of publicity, or just just because it's cool. For as much as I'd love to see a real life Jurassic Park, we have way more important issues that need to be fixed. After all, as stated in my mammoth video, why are we putting so much funding into bringing back these Pleistocene creatures which have been extinct for over 10,000 years, and why don't we instead put that money into ensuring some of the many amazing animals alive today continue to survive using colossal biosciences technology, specifically their ability to edit specific genes in order to make animals more 
are fit in order to survive, as cloning endangered species isn't always the right way to go. For example, Colossal Biosciences is currently working on quote-unquote cloning red wolves, when in actuality these aren't true red wolves, but rather the Galveston Island ghost wolves. Despite their somewhat misleading advertising, these ghost wolves are not exactly true red wolves, nor are they coyotes, but rather a sort of inner grade, with these Galveston Island wolves essentially being their own unique population, consisting of about 50% red wolf DNA and 50% coyote DNA, but these aren't exactly koi wolves, as they've been existing for generations now, with this 50-50 split in genetics. In a lot of ways, they're essentially evolving to become their own species on the island, as they do fill in an entirely separate ecological niche than the coyotes in the surrounding areas, and they don't even interbreed with the coyotes anymore, only interbreeding with the other ghost wolves on the island. Overall, the Galveston Island wolves deserve a whole nother video in of themselves, especially concerning the fact that I've had to mention them in multiple different videos multiple different times now. Getting back on track for a minute, while you actually could clone these ghost wolves, which Colossal Biosciences has already cloned for, they're overall doing mostly fine. With the only threat they're currently facing mostly being habitat destruction, which cloning isn't going to help with. On the other hand, while red wolves would technically benefit from cloning on paper, there's still many problems that come with cloning any endangered species, especially something like the red wolf, which struggles with both inbreeding and outbreeding with coyotes. The only situation where colossal biosciences would actually be helping the red wolf population would technically be if they were creating all new 100% pure red wolves without any close familiar relations with any of the current red wolves alive today. That would mean that if we wanted to help the current red wolf population, we'd have to clone them using an entirely different method than what we did for the dire wolf, which so far simply doesn't exist. As you do have to keep in mind, the dire wolf that has been brought back is still technically more gray wolf in its genetic code than the dire wolf of the past. So if Colossal Biosciences is ever able to actually properly bring back an actual fully extinct animal with its full genetic code remains to be seen. And for as absolutely gorgeous as these incredible quote unquote dire wolves are, I'm fully aware of the fact that they're not entirely dire wolves. And overall, I think it would be for the best if we all try to remain skeptical of the current and future cloning projects to come. Still, I think we can all agree it's pretty cool, and all I hope for is that Colossal Biosciences also continues to at least attempt to help conserve a lot of the endangered species we're still struggling with in some way, shape, or form. Now, if you enjoyed this video, then please feel free to like and subscribe. YouTube is my main source of income right now, so every little bit of watch time, like, share, it all helps. So hopefully I'll see you all real soon. Goodbye.